I've been scarred and I've been bruised. I have learned just what to do. I need to leave my past behind me. I need to look, look, look to the future. No matter what will come, no matter what I've done, I know just what to do. And that's all because of you. Hi, you okay, family? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing my space again and allowing me into yours. My name is Yana Mavumengwana and I'm the face behind you, okay? Your mental health and personal development channel that seeks to journey with you back to your place of being okay. A warm welcome to you if you are new and a welcome back to our loyal people that have been here with us or joined us much earlier in our journey. You're equally important, you're equally valued and I'm utterly grateful to you for continuing to give me a consistent chance welcome 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 it's another tuesday and we've got one of those again the unicorn is not here so i don't think we're going too heavy but i'm starting to feel like you guys want tingo to permanently reside on the couch anyway depth is subjective so some things may touch other people uh, a little deeper than they will touch others uh, but when I can preempt the depth, I will bring Tingo, but sometimes I will get it wrong. Uh, maybe I'll convince you guys to get your tiny unicorns that can join you uh, when you watch me, if you feel like you need the comfort. Thank you, thank you for the warm embrace. I love it. I love hearing from you. I love interacting with you. And I really, really appreciate your company, even if it's in virtual spaces. As you can see on the screen, we've got another one of those, which says, when being invisible no longer pays, giving you permission to be seen and this topic stems from i thought and thought and thought okay what are we going to talk about this tuesday and it stems from understanding that in our journey of development there's normally verbal or not verbal direct or indirect prohibitions um that we sometimes get from our environment that tell us we are not allowed to be a certain thing and i want to counterbalance that by giving you permission precisely to stop being invisible because there's a whole lot of um unrevealed talent untapped into potential that exists within people that have had a negative experience with putting themselves in the spotlight or the risk to be seen is just profoundly too high or the last time they did that the consequences were not something that they would rather repeat the world is full of phenomenal people we don't always get to see them because somewhere along the line somebody blocked that access and decided to give them an experience that made them make the internal decision that i am not going to reveal myself to the world again they look like you are not important your opinions are weird or you are not as pretty sometimes they were originally actually an act of kindness this is especially true for people that grew up in overwhelmed systems it doesn't matter why the system was overwhelmed is there too many children is it a single parent household is it a poverty stricken household um is it a, a stressed mommy or a stressed daddy whatever the case was normally playing it i don't want to say mediocre um, i'm looking for a decent word but not being too much was originally for most people an act of kindness that don't overwhelm the system any further than what it is overwhelmed already don't demand don't be important don't be loud don't be an inconvenience don't ask too many questions you know when you've got a tired parent and you're out you're thinking can i can i and you're such a curious little one you're incredibly annoying like legit not because the opinion in itself is invaluable but because this person is terribly exhausted they must still make supper they must still attend to homework they must still deal with the spouse and it's just a lot and sometimes your voice is adding to the stress and one may observe that is this welcome is me welcome is the stuff that i want to bring welcome in the environment may say from a place of self-preservation that no that is not welcome it's like don't be too much you know quiet it down a little bit this may not even have been intentional because remember the people that raise us and the people that exist in our environments were also once upon a time children that picked up their own little traumas and in their parenting game sometimes those come to pass and they unintentionally harm you or send you destructive messages and i'm hoping we are going to be co-travelers in your journey of self-discovery of understanding why do you refuse to be seen what does visibility represent for you and why does it terrify you so much why are you not writing when you know you're a phenomenal writer 
Why are you not sharing your pieces in spaces where they can be seen by other people, although you know they are valuable? Why are you not sketching anymore? Why are you not painting? Why are you no longer curious? Why aren't you asking questions? Why are you no longer opinionated? But most importantly, why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? And I'm using the word hiding because for some people, especially those that resonate with abusive systems, being overt meant the danger is heightened. So staying at the back, it lessens the risk of you saying the wrong thing, of being ridiculed, of being humiliated. So it's best to just not decide. For some people, they made the wrong decision prior and now there are rebuttals that don't make any decision so that you don't end up making the incorrect decision again there's a multitude of reasons they're different for a lot of people but i am coming here to some people it's denied paternity where somebody just overtly denied that you exist sending a message that your existence is a problem or your existence is is overwhelming or not something to be desired whatever the case was pick the script that best resonates with you and hear me properly with depth and with warmth and with grace when I give you this command verbally as an opposite to the command you initially received. You are allowed to exist. You are allowed to be seen. I'm of the Christian faith, but you can borrow from whatever religion you reside in. God thought there was a need for one of you as well. You can't hide and think this is for the brilliant people they've got it handled. You, in your uniqueness, in all of your messy glory, sing a song that only you can sing. It can only be done by you. There's a uniqueness and a value you bring that cannot be replicated, not by the most brilliant people in the world. You're allowed to come out. Visible no longer means dangerous. You can create the environment that is receptive to your visibility. I know it's scary and vulnerable to risk being seen and to share you with the world if you believe there's something wrong with you. Because the world may not receive you, it may not like you, it may not welcome you, it may not treat you well. That's very true. Maybe you even have the evidence but you have the power and the autonomy to create an environment that has better odds. You couldn't escape that one. So playing invisible was perhaps the smartest move. How strategic of you to dodge the bullets, to dodge the humiliation, the screaming and the yelling by deciding I'm not going to be visible. I'm going to hide. The danger's gone. You can come out. If you don't trust it yet, create the safety barriers. See a therapist. Befriend healthy people. Whatever. Create safety in your environment so you can start feeling safe enough to emerge slowly. And hopefully if you're around healthy people, the little bit of you they see, they're going to be excited and that will encourage you to show yourself a little bit more. And if you're surrounded by brilliant people, they're going to be in awe. And this gives you courage to show yourself a little bit more. And I hope you are going to be blessed with environments that reinforce that visibility doesn't pose any danger. A risk, yes. You can never guarantee how the environment will receive you but you're worth the risk. We've been saying this since May when we started showing ourselves that there is a lot that lies on the other side of risk. But if it's going to bring you any joy, it is worth the risk. You're worth it. You're worth being seen. You're beautiful and important, talented, creative. The world could do with that. Imagine if everybody was functioning optimally and bringing their best optimally. Imagine what a glorious, wonderful place we would be living in. But there's the some that were cut short. The some whose attempts were originally not applauded. <sighs> Redecision is important. You know, we underestimate how much these decisions 
were not made from an adult place. They were made by children who thought maybe it's the wisest thing to just stay in your room, don't tell them what you think. Either they laughed or they thought your smarter sibling could come up with a better plan than you or you were overlooked because maybe you're docile and a bit timid. You have to go back to that child. Give them new experiences so they can create a new decision. Even the original decision was made from an experience. A legitimate one. Children are so fragile. So, so fragile. The things we say around them are incredibly damaging. Whether it is intentional, whether it was meant to be a joke, they don't know enough for Ukuishuza and keep only the substance and let the other stuff slide. So they take all of it. And also adults are figures of authority. They carry so much importance and are sources of survival. Normally you've got no room to dispute what they say. So normally we take what they say about our, ourselves at face value. Of course people aren't perfect. So there was bound to be an error that your parents made there. Take it upon yourself to rectify it. They're probably not aware of the damage they caused. It was probably not intentional. But just because somebody didn't mean to hurt you, it doesn't mean they didn't hurt you. I think we get stuck in the gratitude of being raised well, that we want to excuse the stuff that wasn't well, because we think if we acknowledge it, we mean they were not good people. No, they were good people. Imperfect people nonetheless. And some of the stuff that they said was incredibly damaging because they're imperfect. That doesn't excuse the damage or make it go away. Deliberate intention and effort into repair and updating that original decision is what's going to consequently undo that damage that was done. I want to encourage you to do the thing that you're scared to do. I want you to try and transcend the voices of preempting, but what are they going to say? You know, sometimes the trauma is so profound that people even have the auditory response. It's like they can hear it. Because it was said so often and it broke them so much that, oh, but I can't do that in public because what if they comment about my weight? What if they comment about my complexion? I can't be on YouTube. What if they ridicule me on Twitter and they make jokes about my hair or my whatever? And some of those concerns are valid. The pain when they were originally said still lingers. I stutter. I'm not articulate. They're going to roll their eyes because I can't even express myself well. There's no validity to the stuff that I say. Nobody even knows me. I'm not popular. I'm not well liked. You sit in a boardroom meeting and you have an opinion. And some people just, that the words can't come out. The risk to be seen and draw attention onto them is too profound. And it's not the opinion itself. It's what visibility implies. What are they going to think thereafter? This is especially true for anxious people because after they've said it, they're going to go home and play it over and over. Why did you say that? Why would you say that? You could have said that better. Oh my God, you're so ridiculous. Then they want to go and visit everyone and fetch their opinion back because what do they think now? Do they think, oh, how dumb is she? That's anxiety. Anticipation of threat. You deserve new experiences. Expose yourself to the opportunity to get those experiences. You are going to be pleasantly surprised because believe it or not, you are in a different environment now. You're not in that house, you're not with those people. And you've acquired so many coping resources that even if the environment were to be replicated, you've got a better buffer against it now. And autonomy is such a beautiful thing. That freedom to decide. That it's my skin that's playing now. Listen, there's no greater joy 
than knowing that if an environment doesn't provide what I'm longing for, I have the autonomy to exit it. And we forget that originally this wasn't an option. Hence, mentally distancing yourself by hiding was a good strategy. That was wise. That was a boss ass move because you couldn't physically exit the environment. So finding another cool way to get out of the mess was a brilliant move on a kid's part. You're at a different place now. Take it as I can risk trying because should it not work, I can do something about it. Because what were you going to do to your parents? Let's say they were mean. What were you going to do? Kick them out? No. What are you going to do? Leave. And go live where? On the streets? No. So mentally hiding was in fact protective. Mentally distancing yourself from the situation was in fact life-saving. It was cool, it was well thought, and it bloody worked. How about you look at that strategy and you gracefully release it because it served its intended purpose and call upon better ways that exist within you or learn them if they don't exist to do a different thing, to say, yes, I can hide, but that's one. I need more. I need to learn more. Don't worry about your weapon or blind. You can, you can call upon that one. <laughs> it will still be there. You know, defenses naturally fall when you're safe. Focus on creating safety. And then your little strategies naturally succumb to the safety. And they don't fall away if you feel unsafe. So that is the core. Create safe spaces, visit safe spaces, engineer safe spaces, so you can feel safe to come out. But if you take anything from this video, is that you have the permission to exist, you have the permission to be you, the way that you are, and that deserves to be seen. We welcome that. Show yourself as you are. You don't have to look like anybody else or sound like anybody else. Whoever doesn't like your song can go choose a different playlist and you can find the people that like your soul song and will listen to you sing it. Find these people. I promise you, they exist. They exist. They like your weirdness. They like your quirky. They like your stutter. They like your mess. Find them. They are out there. Your soul song deserves to be heard. Visibility isn't always dangerous. You don't have to hide anymore. There's absolutely no reason for you to. In that closet hides some of the treasures that the world needs. And I'm sorry somebody initially taught you that that wasn't welcome. I'm arguing against them. And I'm saying you are welcome. The environment is no longer strained. It's no longer rejecting. And if it is, We've got the power to create a new one. Think about the thing you've been refusing to do. Think about why you hide from people, from connection, from beauty, from talent, from fantastic opportunity. And you don't have to hide anymore. And your exit can be graceful, slow, paced, can test it out little by little and I wish you strength in that journey. You can start in the comment section by sharing actually. What do you want to do? And watch somebody, somebody dim get guys. <laughs> watch somebody gracefully receive that and hopefully that will give you the strength to see that when I air my ideas there are some people that will host them with courtesy, with patience, even if you're getting it wrong in the beginning, with tolerance and with adoration. Again, guys, thank you. I can never thank you enough for the fact that every time I log in, there is an increase in the subscription numbers and there's new people that are again validating that they are willing to catch what I am putting out there. You have been part of a beautiful journey in my life that encourages my visibility into the world and bringing my gift of articulation, my gift of what I believe was wisdom. This is exactly what I'm saying, that the environment either encourages you or prohibits you 
from being seen. You have been holding my hand, saying you can show more of yourself. People that have been watching me from the beginning, I'm sure can witness the evolution, that they feel like they're getting to know me a bit better because I'm coming out more, I'm coming out more, because you keep on being receptive, saying we welcome that here. So I'm coming from a place of self-disclosure and sharing that I know what I'm saying works if you reach the right environment and my subscribers which is you guys are that environment for me and the people that don't relate to that must gladly stay there because this environment is safe for me it says stuff that makes me want to come out more and more and more and i hope my bravery in doing this despite the trepidation encourages you to be seen as well because it happens that when you show yourself to the world there will be people it doesn't matter how few or how many that will appreciate the song you are trying to sing and that will encourage you to show more and more and more of you try it i've tried it to ensure that it works and i would gladly like to reciprocate that and encourage you to do the same i'm going to keep quiet now person behind the camera is like wrap it up <laughs> Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, you okay family. You are scripting a beautiful chapter of my 2020 and I appreciate you so very much.